KwaZulu-Natal Disaster Management yesterday announced that their teams are on standby following a yellow level 4 warning for areas along the coast between Port Edward and Richards Bay. The South African Weather Service said the warning is for damaging waves and winds with the potential to disrupt small harbours and ports causing damage to coastal infrastructure. Now the warning comes as the Western Cape is reeling from severe torrential rain and gale force winds that hit the province over the weekend leaving a trail of destruction which is amounting to billions in terms of, uh, of damage. Well, lately a webinar funded by the Land Bank discussed the, as the expected rise of El Nino water temperatures in the Pacific Ocean. Now, the gathering focused on the potential impact on weather, the ecosystems, agriculture, water and of course energy in South Africa. Lead meteorologist and senior researcher at the Agriculture Research Council, Dr. Johan Malharba, who participated in this event joins us this morning virtually. Dr. Malhaba, great to have you. Thanks very much for being our guest. So, uh, Doctor, the current situation in the Western Cape and the city of Cape Town disasters where, where people have lost their lives, w were there any signs leading to the disaster, the disaster and, and what have we seen in terms of the changes in patterns? Yes, what we saw a while back, that was around, uh, and I think the first thing that happened there was uh, those storm surge damage on, along the coast. Now, uh, that was forecasted, and it was because of a very big low pressure system moving past the southern parts of the country and resulting in a big area of westerly, southwesterly winds. So that system was seen coming, and it sometimes happened that these systems uh, move past the Cape and we have a high tide like we had back then. So, in my view, that will not be uh, a pattern that changed. That was something that can happen any year, any time. It has happened in the past. Um, as I said, the forecast models were spot on by saying that there should be a, a high tide going with, uh, a storm surge going with a high tide. And that uh, culminating effect had, had the potential to create the damage that we've seen along the coast. So, that, that weather pattern was a big low pressure system moving close to the Cape. And any time that happened and the, the pressures fall in the, in, around the Cape and you've got a long, a, a big area of strong southwesterly winds to the north of this low pressure system, you can have the water pushing up the coast. You have uh, the big waves because of the wind and because of the lower pressure, you also have a higher water level. level. And if that happens with a uh, spring tide, which was the case on the weekend of the 16th, 15th and 16th of September, then you can really get some um, very, very high water levels with the big waves and then we see the damage that we've seen. So that was the first big disaster that we saw there in the last few weeks or so. And that was around the 16th and 17th of, um, of September, around the 16th of September. Yeah. Now, um, more recently, we had the big rains uh, in the Cape and the flooding. And that happened this just this previous weekend. That was also a result of a system that you can see developing over the Cape and over the country any time of the year. It's called the cut-off low pressure system. I think most people are by this time used to that name. And we use it in South Africa to describe a very uh, strong low pressure system usually. It's usually it's strong, it doesn't need to be, but it can be very intense, and this one was. So we use that term to describe this low pressure system. And usually those low pressure systems would be, um, they can develop anywhere, but they develop mostly um, further south. And if they get cut off, uh, more strongly, they move further north, and so that determines their position. Now, since December last year, we had a few of these systems over the Cape, and that is a one one big reason for the above normal rainfall that they've seen. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we had a number of these systems, and this last one was quite intense as well. Now, the track of the system was moving, uh, was taking it over the mountainous areas of the Southern Cape and the Western Cape, the winter rainfall region. And for that re reason, they had very high uh, rainfall totals 
Um, and as I mentioned, this low pressure system type can develop any time of the year, yeah. but it is most prevalent during autumn and spring. So, so mean, that is also is, part of the natural pattern. Is that a natural pattern? Because yes. I mean, we see obviously, and I think I think if we can, obviously we focus lo locally and we're seeing what's happening in South Africa, but it just seems that these occurrences are happening happening more often and they seem a lot more intense. I mean, we've got KwaZulu-Natal now on standby after a level four warning. Um, what, what type of weather patterns are leading to this current extreme condition that we are seeing? I mean, the Western Coast or the Cape saying they've, they've had the worst winter on, one of the worst winters they've had um, with, with terrible weather. Um, now KZN on a level four. So are we noticing that things are changing very much so in, in, in come this year? Well, yeah. So this year is anomalous in terms of the rain that the Cape has seen. And it's part of our natural climate variability also, at least, because that is how the climate system works. Uh, just a few years back, we were heading to a day zero in the Cape. They had a lack of low pressure systems in the area. They had dry conditions. In, back then, uh, the extreme that we noticed was a dry extreme. Now, the climate system has the potential to create uh, longer lasting extremes, as we have seen during the uh, 2015 to 18 drought in the Cape. And now, since December, many low pressure systems developing in that same area. So that, that characteristic of the climate system can really uh, lead one to believe that the, the things have changed to a new stable uh, mean or, or norm. Uh, but usually then it falls back to another kind of pattern. Mm. At this mm. stage, the, the damage that, that is expected along the coast is part of the same low pressure system that was uh, giving, giving us all the rain over the southern parts of the country, now moving towards the east and uh, to the west of that low pressure system, we'd have strong southwest steadily winds over the coastal areas. And then now, like we saw in that weekend of the 15th and 16th, it is again a springtide. Now it is a full moon instead of the new moon. And uh, between the springtide and those strong winds, we can expect that there will be some anomalous uh, uh, water levels in the region. So these strong low pressure systems, they can develop any time of the year. Yeah. The Langsburg floods in 1985, ach, 1981, that was, and that was a massive floods. And the big was Luna floods of 1987. And that was the biggest floods that we have ever had in South Africa mm -hmm. in 1987. Mm -hmm. Those were all part of this type of low pressure system. Now, because the climate is, it's, it is warming up somewhat, you can expect that there is more uh, moisture in the atmosphere and the potential for these systems to create uh, large amounts of rainfall in shorter times or maybe slow moving systems that give you more rain uh, over a longer period. The okay. potential of that is increasing according to the model data. Well, it, it certainly I wouldn't does. Say that I remember yes. there were reports, sorry, I, I, just to ask you a few questions, we don't have too much time, so I just want to grab a few questions in while we can. I mean, we've got a, a lot of reports that do come out saying that 2023, these were predictions, and then, of course, they've become quite true that this is going to be the hottest year in history or on record. And we've seen many European countries going through crazy weather temperatures and still experiencing record highs now when they're actually going into more the winter months, but they are still breaking records. Countries have seen more of these intense we uh, weather patterns as well, like reports of earthquakes in Morocco, the devastating floods in Libya. Um, I mean, these are some of the natural disasters that have become more prevalent in some of the Asian countries, like Haiti, the Caribbean Sea, uh, as well as some of the US states. Are these some of the shifts that we can expect in future because of how we are seeing temperatures getting hotter and hotter and the whole warning of climate change and global warming? It, it may be, yes. One of the reasons that, that they had these long, dry and hot spells in Europe in, and in the uh, USA as well at certain times in this summer and in parts of China, as I know. Part of the reason uh, for that is the um, upper air jet stream and the way it behaves. Now, that can really also be um, the reason for its behavior is very much to do with the distribution of sea surface and land surface temperatures. Uh, influencing that system. And uh, as the uh, uh, energy system of the Earth changes uh, because of higher temperatures, one could maybe start seeing patterns that you are not used to in terms of how the winds at those levels of the jet stream uh, 
um, how they blow, the strength and the direction, or not necessarily direction, but at least strength and um, yeah, the angular momentum that they have with them. And that also results in the position of high pressures and low pressure systems that, that are stagnant. And the reason for these droughts over Europe was, uh, uh, or hot conditions over Europe, is usually the stagnant feature um, of, the, the, of the high pressure system itself. It will remain in place for quite a long time. And at that same, that same time that you have a strong high pressure system in some area, there usually uh, is a number of low pressure systems that develop in another region in the same kind of area. And then you see uh, flooding starting to happen in certain areas and you have big droughts. Now, when you look at the climate statistics, then that will come out as extreme values because you've got a, a longer period of the same type of pattern. Now, um, these type of high pressure systems that, uh, that had a blocking effect and so forth, they may also become more prevalent uh, in a warmer climate. It is not un, uh, unfathomable that that could happen. And uh, for that reason, yes, there can be some changes in patterns in a different temperature regime of the Earth. Yeah. The flooding in Libya was interesting as well. It was caused by also a deep low pressure system, which they call a medicane because it's almost as strong as a hurricane, but it develops over the um, Mediterranean. And at first that caused uh, the flooding in Greece and afterwards that caused the flooding in Libya yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just in the case of South Africa, we see a lot of low pressure systems now moving up across the southern parts of the country. In the same time, the northern parts of the country uh, were relatively dry since we saw all the low pressure systems in the Cape. Yeah. So the climate system has a way of keeping these systems kind of in place for a while, and then suddenly there will be a shift and everything looks different again. I mean, for years, for years now, we've seen nations gather for like COP conferences uh, to discuss climate change and, and, uh, and, and these weather patterns. And this year, I know that they're gearing up to meet in Dubai. Have these gatherings yielded any changes? Um, are, are, are countries and nations working hard enough to try and stop these weather patterns that are being caused by the 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 the, the, uh, the climate change that we are living through. There is a big push uh, for 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 the changes to happen. I wouldn't say that I know exactly what is being done on the climate change front in terms of the mitigation, uh, rather adaptation maybe. Um, there are all these the meetings, and we know also the, the Biden administration in the USA is very is strongly uh, focused on, on climate change, and they've got their plans for future, uh, also very strongly lessening the dependence on fossil fuels. So that is one example, I think, of a very strong move towards uh, uh, moving away from any potential contribution that the human race can have, uh, if it, and that is if our contribution is that strong. The Earth is a, it's a big system and there's a lot of feedbacks. It's a difficult system to understand, but as far as we understand, there is an influence, and I would say there is one example of a very strong uh, movement against any contribution that, that we could make. But it's always difficult to know exactly how much you can do. Um, but yeah, in that case, there's a strong case for, for a big, big country, big government that is making uh, a tangible uh, shift yeah. uh, towards getting, you know, cleanable. Right. Um, so yeah, it must have a positive effect as you can, as you can think. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Johan Malhaba. He's a lead meteorologist and senior researcher at the Agriculture Research Council discussing atmospheric behavior and its potential impact on weather, ecosystems, agriculture, water and energy in South Africa as the country experiences torrential rains and floods.